When Sue Found Sue by Tony Buzio, illustrated by Diana Sudica. Never lose your curiosity about everything in the universe. It can take you to places you never thought possible. Sue Hendrickson. Sue Hendrickson was born to find things, missing trinkets, prehistoric butterflies, sunken ships, even buried dinosaurs. If it was lost, Sue's curiosity led her on a hunt to find it. Sue began searching for lost treasures when she was mighty small. She was born shy and incredibly smart. Treasure hunting was the perfect job for a shy girl. When she was young, Sue would walk alone through the alley behind her home in Munster, Indiana. With her head down, she was on a mission to find things, and she often did, like the brass perfume bottle she's never lost. Sue wasn't like other kids, so shy and smart. She gobbled up books the way other kids gobbled up ginger snaps. Head down, a book a day, Sue learned things all on her own. She dialed her curiosity up to high and discovered everything about anything that interested her. Sue's curiosity led her to visit the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. She loved to view the endless supply of treasures that other hunters, maybe shy outsiders themselves, had already found. Sue couldn't wait to grow up and search the wide world for hidden treasures on her own. At the age of 17, she launched her life of discovery, traveling, living outdoors, supporting herself, and finding things. One curiosity always led to another, and for the first time, Sue joined teams, teams of curious, dedicated treasure hunters, diving first for the tropical fish, and then for lost boats, lost airplanes, and even lost cars eventually led Sue to search Dominican amber mines for extinct prehistoric butterflies to, to search the deserts of Peru for prehistoric whale fossils and finally, finally to search the hills of western South Dakota for dinosaur fossils. For four long, hot, dusty summers, Sue dug for duck-billed dino fossils taking down the big rocks with a shovel and pick, then freeing the bones first with a rock hammer, then with a digging knife, then with an exacto knife and a tiny pick, and finally dusting the area with a paintbrush to remove all traces of rock from the bone. No showers for washing, no beds for sleeping, no escape from the beating sun, but still, Sue was part of a team. She loved the work the discovery, and the chance to be curious and find things. During the last weeks of her fourth summer of digging for duckbills in the blistering heat, Sue Hendrickson felt pulled to a sandstone cliff far off in the distance. She couldn't say why then, and she can't say why even now, but she was called to that cliff. And on August 12th, 1990, when her team headed into town to fix a flat tire, Sue finally followed her curiosity. She and her golden retriever, Gypsy, left camp alone that morning in a dense, misty fog. So unusual in the hot, dry plains, they hiked for four hours across seven miles of rugged prairie land before they finally reached the rock face Sue had been so curious about. Sue and Gypsy stood below the 60-foot high towering cliff of tan and gray rock. I walked around the base of the cliff with my head down, watching the ground. About halfway along, I noticed a few pieces of what looked like bones. Then I looked up. Sue stared up at three enormous backbones protruding from the cliff eight feet above her. She felt a thrill run through her. Could it be? It was hard to believe, but Sue knew by their incredible size what those fossils must be. 
a Tyrannosaurus rex. I could see them quite clearly in the sunlight, as though waiting patiently for someone to find them. Once again, Sue Hendrickson did what a shy outsider girl had trained herself to do so well. She found them. She rushed back to the campsite, humming with the excitement, the happiness, and the thrill of her find. She couldn't wait to tell the others, I Tyrannosaurus Rex. Her team immediately named the dinosaur Sue the T-Rex after Sue Hendrickson, the finder. Then they raced to free the T-Rex from her cliff. But releasing 300 T-Rex bones in 115 degree heat under the sweltering sun without damaging the bones was neither quick nor easy. For five days, Sue and the team worked from sunrise to sunset, breaking rocks with picks and digging with shovels to remove nearly 30 feet of sandstone and hard soil. At last, the bones appeared, so many of them. The team mapped the location of each with drawings and photographs. Finally, with knives, brushes, and small tools, Sue and the team removed the numbered and numbered every bone, recording them in a notebook. Nearly three weeks later, trucks bounced over 150 miles to deliver all of those bones to the Black Hills Institute. Sue, the T-Rex, was finally free, thanks to Sue Hendrickson, who, had, who was born to find things. After a long dispute about ownership, Sue the T-Rex went to auction, and who won the auction? None other than the Field Museum, the very same museum Sue Hendrickson loved to visit so often as a young girl. Walk into the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago. Inside, Sue the T-Rex towers over you. She is the world's largest, most complete, best preserved Tyrannosaurus rex fossil discovered so far. And she was found by Sue Hendrickson, that once shy girl, so different from the others, whose curiosity has always led her to find things and always will. The thrill of discovery is a real emotion, like a rush. The excitement is worth the days or months of hard work and keeps me going on and on looking for more. Sue Hendrickson